Father, we're desperate for your word because your word is the words of life and we can't go anywhere else. So please, 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 by the power of your word, change our lives. Some of us here, God, we're at the end of ourselves. We, we, we've almost lost hope and faith that you can do what we've heard you can do. You've done in other people's lives, but it's not happened in our lives yet, God. Please, we're sick and tired of being sick and tired, and we're tired of living the life that we know is wrong. Holy Spirit, help us. Lord Jesus, bring glory to your Father through us. Father, glorify your Son. In us, we ask it, please, in Jesus' name, amen. Verse 1 of chapter 7. If you guys remember last week, we looked at the Ark of the Covenant. <clears throat> if you weren't here, you guys that have seen Raiders of the Lost Ark, there was an ark built when Israel was first set free. It was a prophetic ark. It was a box with a big top placed on it called the Mercy Seat. And on top of the Mercy Seat were the two angels with their wings going backwards. And that's signifying that he was the Lord who dwells between the cherubim. He was the Lord who dwells in literally in holy fire. Inside that ark was placed a jar of manna, the hidden manna. It's written that the Lord Jesus was the bread that came down from heaven. There was a budded, the budded rod of Aaron who was the shepherd of people, speaking of the life that was to come from death, especially speaking of the wood that our Lord Jesus was nailed on. <clears throat> and then there was the, uh, the Ten Commandments, thank you, which was to speak of the law that he was to set us free from, the law, the prophets, the Lord Jesus, all right in there. And it was like we do as people, we looked at this last week, we, we idolize these things and we, we find ourselves with superstition. If I hold on to my Bible in my car, I won't get a ticket. If, if I go to church every Sunday, I can go to heaven. doesn't matter if I live like hell the rest of the time. And the, they found out the hard way that that wasn't true as about 50 plus of the Israelites died when they opened the top. And you guys remember what happened to the Philistines, right? Anybody not know? That thing was a real pain in the... <laughs> <laughs> so they brought the ark to Beth Shemesh. You remember? You guys remember? That's where we pick it up. Verse 1, chapter 7. Then the men of kirjath Jerim came and took the ark of the Lord and brought it into the house of Abinadab on the hill and consecrated Eleazar, his son, to keep the ark of the Lord. And so it was that the ark remained in kirjath Jerim a long time. It was there 20 years, and all the house of Israel lamented after the Lord. Let me tell you what happened. The Israelites were slaves. They were slaves. They did what they were told to do when they were told to do it by the Philistines. <clears throat> Christ had given us this power to rule over our sin, but instead, for most of us, our sin rules over us. I've said it over and over again. Woe unto the one whose slave becomes his master. Right? They can't figure out why, but we have the ark. The power, the very power and presence of God is in our midst. And they lamented after God. Why? 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 And to me, it reminds us of, it reminds me of us. We find ourselves <clears throat> wondering why God leaves us where we are. Has anybody ever done that? Why? Why am I in this situation? Why does this have to be my life? Why did you let this happen to me? Why didn't you stop me? Why? Why? When are you going to respond? When are you going to answer? How long are you going to leave me here? Am I the only one that's, that happened to? Anybody else? And the craziest thing is, you know that the Bible says that Jesus Christ actually doesn't say it, but it, it certainly insinuates that he is the lily of the valley. 
The book of Song of Solomon describes the Savior as the lily of the valley. Do you know in the valley, that's where all the best flowers grow? Do you know why? Because in the valley, you know what a valley is? Here's the land, and then there's a little valley. This is the valley. That's where all the junk flows down. Everything goes down into the valley. And sometimes you think you're in a valley, but you don't realize, man, you're in the best possible place. The valley sometimes, man, that's where God gets his best work done. You're surrounded by everybody else's crap, aren't you? This just sucks. Everybody's crapping on me. I'm in the valley. Why does this have to be my life? 10 years, 20 years, 30 years. And God's sitting back going, I'm just waiting. I'm just waiting. Well, what is God waiting for? What's God waiting for? Why is he leaving you in the valley? I mean, surely if he's God, he can rescue you, can he? Surely if he's God, he could change the heart of your husband, your child, the judge, your mother, your family. Certainly if he's God, why is he leaving me here? I mean, these Israelites are lamenting 20 years. Why? And then the prayer that I've prayed so many times. God, if the desire that I desire is so bad, then why don't you just take this desire from me? Why don't you just take it from me? Anybody? Anybody relate to that one? I hate myself. I hate myself. I hate myself. I remember 25 years ago, first coming to the Lord, first just visiting a church, wasn't even walking with the Lord yet. I remember walking my dog and praying, God, please protect this woman from me. Please protect her from me. I was so bad. I knew I was so bad. I knew I was so cruel. I know it was so horrible to my girlfriend, who later became my wife. I begged God, please protect her from me. And it was just a few years later, I wound up in prison going, God, why did you put me in prison? And he looked at me and said, you asked me to protect it from you. <laughs> yeah, I did, didn't I? You say, God, why? He says, I put you in the valley. <laughs> it's the lowest point you'll ever be. Why do you think I put you there? To protect you from you. Why don't you bless me with lots of money and I can go into a good expensive rehab? Would that help you? The Israelites lamented after the Lord 20 years. Then Samuel spoke to all the house of Israel saying, If you return to the Lord with all your hearts, then put away those foreign gods and the Ashtaroths from among you, and prepare your hearts for the Lord, and serve him only, he will deliver you from the hand of the Philistines. So the children of Israel put away the bowels and the Ashtaroths and served the Lord only. It's a crazy thing. Now, husbands, you'll relate. Wives, maybe you'll relate. Young people, you'll get this later like a bolt from the blue. I've told my wife certain things for 25 years. You know you should do this. They don't listen. You know you should do this. They don't listen. You know you should do this. They don't. All of a sudden, some girl, some friend, somebody comes along and says, hey, you know you should do this. And they do it and they go, oh, I should have done this years ago. Like, I've been telling you to do that for 20 years. I don't recall. I don't like the way you talk to me. I don't. Does it, married couples, come on, come on. Now, how many times and how many prophets have told the Israelites, God's not going to bless a mess. You're looking for the power of God, but you don't want the holiness of God. You're looking for the strength of God, but you don't want the righteousness of God. You're looking for things from God that he is not going to give you because you do not give him what? Again, 
Return to the Lord with all your hearts. Put away the foreign gods that are among you, the Ashtaroths, and prepare your heart for the Lord. Hey, if you're in the valley and you've been there a long time, and you're sick and tired of hearing people tell you what to do. Oh, goodness. And how many times, why don't you just stop smoking pot? Why didn't I think of that? I'll be the another voice. Maybe this is the voice you listen to. Why don't you just stop smoking pot? Why don't you just stop drinking? Why don't you just stop watching porno? Why don't you just stop filling the blank? He says this to them. 20 years, as Pastor Jim Coy always says to me, so how's that working for you? I hate when he says that. He's like Nathan, he's like Nathan the prophet. He comes and he says, you know, you should do this, 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 and ah, but I don't, I don't like that. And he goes, okay, so how's it working for you, what you're doing? Uh, it's not working so good. How's running your own life working for you so far, guys? Listen, you're going to like this one. A guy at the gym said this to me the other day. Master Laborio, he said this to me. I thought, man, this is one of the greatest things I've ever heard. I think I'm going to keep this one forever. It's easy being the hammer. We're going to find out what you're all about when you're the nail. I'll let that sink in a second. It's great when you're the hammer. It's the best thing in the world to be the hammer. We're going to find out what's really in you when you're the nail. Now we're going to find out what you're about. Now we're going to find out what's inside you. Now we're going to find out. Remember we talked all Sunday about uh, allowing yourself to be led, to submitting to the authority God's placed in your life. Do you know how many kids that I know? How many kids, young teenagers, they are the great, you hang out with them for days, and you're like, man, I, I don't understand why somebody has trouble with this kid. The nicest, oh, the sweetest, the cutest, the nicest. And then you send them back to their home, and everything blows up in their house again. And they call their parents, call them, man, can you help me out again? It's like, and you think to yourself, what's wrong with this kid? You know what? Let the kid come and live with us. Kid comes and lives with us. Hey, uh, do me a favor. Can you take the garbage out? I ain't taking no garbage out. <laughs> what are you talking about? I don't want to. What do you mean you don't want to? And this is what you get. Ready? Ready? Watch. Watch. Teenagers, watch. Why did you do that? Why did you say that? Why didn't you do that? Once they're the hammer, it's the greatest thing in the world to them. Oh, man. I want... I want, I want, I want. As soon as you say no, and they got to be the nail for a little while, boom, just like that thing, boom. I'm not going to do it. You can't make me. Ah. They throw fits. I mean, sometimes they throw themselves on the floor and throw an all-out fit, and you're like, don't move. I got to get this on film. Samuel spoke to the house of Israel and he said, you know, if you just return to the Lord with all your heart, put away the foreign gods and the Ashtaroths from among you. Let me explain to you. Foreign gods, small g, everything that you've placed in front of God. And that includes your, your kids, your husband, your wife, anything that's gotten before God, your vehicle, your sport, anything. Put it away and your Ashtaroths. That's very important. Astaroth, they used to have back in the day Astaroth poles. It was a phallic symbol that they had built in certain places, and they sometimes had them in temples, but they had little phallic symbols they'd place in their house. And it was a fertility. It was a blessing upon their sex. It's literally a phallic symbol. And it was in everybody's house. I mean, imagine people putting something in their house to entertain themselves. 
And it was like in every, what is that doing in your house? Now, I want you to know that I'm as guilty as anybody else when it comes to the next thing I'm going to tell you. But I would like to ask you, what if somebody came from another planet and they wiped out the whole human race and they started walking in houses and seeing what were these humans all about? And they walked from room to room and they saw these boxes and these flat square things on the wall in every room, sometimes two and three in one room. Big ones and little ones and giant ones and rooms just with one big screen in it. They'd say, they had their gods in those boxes. Their idols must have lived somehow, some way in these giant boxes. And it cost how much percentage of your salary? And some of us robbed them? Put away those foreign gods and Ashtaros from among you. Or how about this? At least get it under control. All right. Now conviction time. In case it haven't been enough. God gives you your salary every week. And he says, I want you to give me 10% of it back so that I can feed those who are hungry. God gives you 24 hours a day. And I'll submit to you that you should give God about two hours a day of your time. Unadulterated, you and God time. Whether you give him an hour in the morning, an hour at night, 10%. That's not asking a lot. 10%. Well, what if I got to sleep? Okay, what do you sleep? Eight hours a day? No problem. What's that leave? 16 hours? Yeah. Whew. High school education at best. So give God an hour and a half. Can you do that? How much time do you give that box a day? How much time a day do you spend, whether it's the computer screen, whether it's the TV screen, whether it's the movies, whether it's Netflix, whatever it is, how much time a day are you giving it? And then you're saying, God, I don't understand. How come you're not blessing me? Where, where's my husband? How come my relationship is so? How come, how come, how come, how come? Why is my life a mess? <laughs> because all you can think about all day long is the walking dead. Maybe it's time to just notch back the TV to three hours a day. You laugh? You think I'm kidding? Man, I know people I used to, back in the day, I don't know if they still do it. Um, white people call them soap operas. Black people call them stories. Right? You all still call it that? The stories. You can watch the stories. Watch the soap operas. Hours upon hours upon hours. I knew young, young men that would cut out of school to go watch soap operas. What's Victor going to do? <laughs> Did I just nail something? <laughs> Victor, you know who Victor is, do you? As the stomach turns, days of our lives. Uh, is there any new ones out now, anybody? Don't do it, don't do it. Don't fall for that one, that's a bad one. Verse 5, and Samuel said, gather all Israel to Mitzpah, and I will pray to the Lord for you. So they gathered together at Mitzpah, drew water, and poured it out before the Lord. And they fasted that day and said there, we have sinned against the Lord. And Samuel judged the children of Israel at Mitzpah. He judged them at Mitzpah. You know what he said? 
He said, listen, how many times have you called upon God and you've not fulfilled your promise? Go to the next level. What do you mean go to the next level? Sacrifice. Fast. Go a day without drinking coffee. Go a week without eating chocolate. How about a whole day with only drinking water? No food. Just to prove to God, and this time, I mean it. I need help, God. And I know I've asked you a thousand times before. And I know I've broken my promise. Here, he judged them. He said to him, listen, I know your problem. And I know you're weak. And I'm not judging you to judge you to look down upon you. I'm just telling you from one beggar to another where there's a good meal. It's like I've said before. You guys have heard me say it. You know those shows on TV? Uh, So You Think You Can Dance, um, American Idol. X Factor. X Factor. Thanks. Good job. No, I never do that, bro. You just bring the attention to yourself, and then it's all embarrassing. Everybody's going to know you watch TV all the time. (laughs) And I say, all the kids, they go crazy. I want to watch that show. And they dream. They go to a bar, and they sing. When they're old enough, they go to the bar, and they sing in a a karaoke band. And they have these delusions. I'm telling you, delusions. Somebody's going to discover me. They walk around singing. Somebody's going to hear me. Somebody will be driving by my house. I have the next Taylor Swift. There she is. And I always say, I always tell my daughters this. I say, so what do you really think you're looking for in that stuff? What do you really think? What if I told you I have a life for you? Ready? You're going to grow up you're going to get married and get divorced two or three times. You're going to have people betray you, rob you. You're going to have people say the most horrible things about you. You're going to get addicted to drugs. You're going to go in and out of rehab. Yay! Yes! Is that the life you want? Nobody would say yes. Well, somebody want to name to me one big star that hasn't had at least two or three of those things? Anyway, anybody want to be Hannah Montana these days? What do you think that life holds for you? Oh, but I'll be famous and I'll have lots of money and you'll find out like everybody else does that doesn't make you any happier than being broke. The only thing having a lot of money affords you the ability to do is not worry about having a lot of money, but believe me, your problems are compounded. And the vast majority of you guys in your heart are going, let me try, just once, let me try. Just give me a shot, let me try. I know, I know that's what you're saying. Because you can handle it. Be careful. It was a, The book, Death of a Salesman. You guys ever read that book in high school? There's a line in that book. He says, oh, shucks, man. He had all the wrong dreams. He had all the wrong dreams. This generation, they got all the wrong dreams, man. They want fast food. They want fast food instead of a feast. Have I done that one before? Have I told you guys this one before? Listen to me, especially you young folk. The world is telling you fast food is good. What you need to do is masturbate and get a lover. That's what the world is telling you. You need to find a lover, you need to have sex, especially you girls, and you need to masturbate a lot. They're telling you to get some fast food in your life. And I'm telling you, wouldn't you rather have a feast? Thanksgiving, what's it, a week away? How many of you all wait for Thanksgiving? You're already thinking about, oh my goodness, she's bringing that pecan pie, that pumpkin gooey bars, 
man, my wife, she makes this turkey. Let me tell you what she does. She brines it. You guys know what brining is? She takes a big bag and she fills it with, with, with all kinds of um, citrus. And then, and then she puts all kinds of seasonings in it. All kinds. And then she, she ties the bag on. She puts it in for like 24 hours. It sits. And then she takes it out. And now this year, she's going to take, she's going to make homemade um, mayonnaise. I mean, literally make the mayonnaise and season it, and you rub it all over the skin of the turkey before you put it in, and it literally cooks and makes the skin like this crispy, delicious, man! But you know what you should do before? On your way to your aunt's house, before you get there, stop at McDonald's and get a hamburger. Doesn't that even sound stupid? And that's what the world's telling you to do. I'm telling you, you can have a feast. You wait for the one man, the one woman God has prepared for you. It's a feast, man. It's the greatest thing in the world to melt into your lover's arms and to say, I love you so much. So much. This was the greatest experience of my life. Thank you. Nah, go to McDonald's on the way. You know, do that whole McDonald's thing with your life. How stupid. Don't do it. Oh, but it feels good. McDonald's feels great. I used to get, do you remember when they had the, the bucket of fries? I used to do buckets of fries, man. Just, just you'd eat, before you finish with the bucket, the pimples were breaking out on your face. Before you were finished with the bucket, the, it was so much grease. You ever just like, oh my goodness, that's delicious. And then it's like an hour later, and you're like, oh, my goodness. Listen, guys, if I haven't been clear enough, let me be clearer. Sunday, me and my wife went up about 6 o'clock to Charm City Burger. How many of you never been to Charm City Burger? Woe unto you. <laughs> Charm City Burger is on Hillsboro, east of US-1, on the south side of the road. It's a little tiny box. If you like hamburgers, just wow. They have something called the Big Sloppy. It has two pieces of meat in it. It has a fried egg. It has a hash brown. It has shredded everything. <laughs> bacon pieces, this, not just bacon bits, not like the can of bacon bits, I mean bacon. They, they don't even, they just fold the bacon over it. It's like this big, and you're like, there's no way I'm eating it. The first bite, you're like, there's no way I'm not eating this. <laughs> Nobody shall. They, oh, the, one of the things they give you is, is the old-fashioned tater tots, man. You get tater tots, and you get sweet potato fries. Oh, my goodness. And then they got milkshake. You know what milkshake I had the other day. What, what's it called, Austin? The binge. The binge. Caramel and salt. Oh, wow. Salted caramel shake. All right, so here I am, and I'm eating this one. This particular night, I didn't go with the Big Sloppy on Sunday. I went with this called, it's called the Godfather. <laughs> now, for, for you Italians, this will sound appetizing, maybe some of you Latinos, but it is a, a sweet um, sausage sliced, and then they put, and they saute onions, red and green peppers. And then they put this provolone cheese in with it, and they put it all on this bun. I mean, you pick it up, you talk about just, it, there's no way they even plan on you doing that. The first bite you take, you're just like, feast. <laughs> then I ate a, uh, they had a, uh, the shake that they had, Blue Bell ice cream. I don't know if you guys have ate Blue Bell ice cream. We're not talking about, th this is better than haagen -Dazs. Yeah. Yeah, better than haagen -Dazs. Yes. The one I had was a uh, pumpkin. It was a pumpkin with something in it that was, like, incredible. It was gritty. It almost tasted like a, a pie crust. Let me tell you. Generally, I share with my kids. I had the two little ones there. It was like, ain't going to happen. 
So there I am eating this thing. I eat the Godfather. It's gone in a minute. My wife's like, did you taste it at all? I was like, oh, yeah. Now, there's the problem here. All of us, spiritually speaking, are lactose intolerant. I happen to be very lactose intolerant. Not a big ice cream or, 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 or dairy eater, just a little bit here and there. I ate, I drank this shake, and then my wife wanted to go look at some furniture that some lady had on, on Craigslist. And let me tell you, I got back in that car. She all right? Fine. Now, there's some certain things that happen if you're lactose intolerant that happen about 15 minutes later that I don't do in front of my wife. But gosh, I was wishing this one day I could because I was dying. Dying. I set new records on strength that day. You know why? Because instead of waiting for my feast, I decided for my fast food. And again, spiritually speaking, I'm making this, I'm belaboring this point for my young brothers and sisters. Wait, I say, on the Lord. He has a feast for you. Don't suffer from spiritual indigestion. When you find out that you've been lied to, it's usually too late. Treasure what God has given you. Hold back for just that person. You know what the greatest thing is? This is the greatest thing. <laughs> this is the greatest thing. You could be in your 40s and 50s, and God can restore all of your purity back to you so that that first time that you have that intimacy with the one God's chosen, it's just like the first. And God releases all that oxytocin into your body all over again. It's the and if you were here on Sunday, you understand what I'm talking about. If not, get the CD because I'm not going to go over that again. Cupid, man. Bing! I love this person and I don't care who knows it. I have no idea where I am. Thank you. Wow, we're making real good progress, huh? And Samuel judged the children of Mitzpah. Seven. Now, when the Philistines heard that the children of Israel had gathered together at Mitzpah, the lords of the Philistines went up against Israel. When the children of Israel heard of it, they were afraid of the Philistines. So the children of Israel said to Samuel, Do not cease to cry out to the Lord our God for us, that he may save us from the hand of the Philistines. You strengthen yourself in the Lord, you get close to the Lord. You leave that life, you abandon it. And all of a sudden, because you're not in the world, you're not in the street, you feel weak. I'm weak. I'm weak. And then your enemies, or what looks like your friends, come on and hang out, come on and go with us. And you're like, oh no, I'm not going to be... Because when you're in the street, you think that's strength. When you're out there doing stuff and you think it's strength, not realizing that it's in your weakness that God's strength is made perfect. And now you find, and you've called up a friend, please, please pray for me. Please pray for me. What's the matter? What's the matter? My friends are calling me. They're come on, I can't do it. I can't do it. I can't do it. I pray for you. Be strong. Be strong. Verse 9, and Samuel took a suckling lamb and offered it as a whole burnt offering to the Lord. Then Samuel cried out to the Lord for Israel, and the Lord answered him. I love this. Did you hear what he said? The fervent prayer of a righteous man is effectual. It's powerful. The fervent, effectual prayer of a righteous man is powerful. However you want to put that verse. It's powerful, and it availeth much. Could you please... Pray for me. Why? I'm weak and I hate myself. Steady the ship. I'm going to pray for you. And here the Lord answered him. Now Samuel was offering up a burnt offering. The Philistines drew near to battle against Israel. By the way, let me mention the same Philistines who had just wiped out 35,000 Israelites just a few months before this. 
Now, the Israelites, they weren't planning on battle. They, weren't, they were lamenting for 20 years. They were sitting around feeling sorry for themselves, getting weak and old and tired. And then they spent the last month crying out to God, please help me, <laughs> like little girls. <laughs> oh, that's what they thought anyway. But God's like, I can answer that prayer. I can answer a brokenhearted prayer. And look what happens. But the Lord thundered with a loud thunder upon the Philistines that day and so confused them that they were overcome before Israel. The Lord thundered, a loud thunder. Let me tell you something. <laughs> the fear of the Lord is in everybody's heart. And sometimes God just needs to unlock it every once in a while. Remember the Philistines last week? They were so freaked out because they had the Ark of the Covenant. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? And then the Ark went to them and they sent it back. Ah, oh, those Israelites, they're weak. And they heard that all of Israel went to Mitzpah and they thought, oh, they're planning to revolt against us. Let's attack them now. And Israel, and, and the God of Israel went, Boosh! Oh, what is that fear? That's the God of Israel. I told you! I told you we should leave them alone! But no, you wouldn't listen. My hemorrhoids are just healing up now. <laughs> I had to. And the men, <laughs> never mind. And the men of Israel went out of Mitzpah and pursued the Philistines and drove them back as far as Beth Car. Then Samuel took a stone and set it up between Mitzpah and Shen and called its name Ebenezer, saying, Thus far the Lord has helped us. Ebenezer means the stone of help. He is the rock of our salvation. He, the Lord Jesus, is our Ebenezer. Doesn't sound like a tough name, but it is. Ebenezer. You've got to say it right. Ebenezer. No, 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 no. Ebenezer. Like Ken Graves. Ebenezer. <laughs> Ken named his son Ebenezer. He did. Ben, right? Ebenezer. Didn't work. So the Philistines were subdued, and they did not come any more into the territory of Israel. As a matter of fact, the hand of the Lord was against the Philistines all the days of Samuel. And the cities which the Philistines had taken from Israel were restored to Israel, from Ekron to Gath. And Israel recovered its territory from the hands of the Philistines. Also, there was peace between Israel and the Amorites. We'll talk more about that next week, because the Amorites were a very important part of what the Israel's past was. But it's like I've said before. The Bible says in the book of Proverbs that when a man's ways please the Lord, what? He makes even his enemies to be at peace with him. Yes. Amen. Good job. And Samuel judged Israel all the days of his life. He went from year to year on a circuit to Bethel, Gilgal, Mitzpah, and judged Israel those places. But he always returned to Ramah, for his home was there. There he judged Israel, and there he built an altar to the Lord. He judged Israel, meaning he, he was in the same position as Moses. And he said, listen, I want you to appoint th head of thousands, head of hundreds, head of tens, and if it's so big a deal that you can't figure it out, just bring it to me, and I'll take care of it when I get there, that he would spend a couple of months in this city, a couple of months in that city, and he'd take care of all the business. What? What's the problem here? And that's the same position that God's given us as pastors and elders. We judge amongst the people. What's the problem here? Well, tell me what this is. Oh, I don't want to bother you. Bother me. That's what I'm doing here. I'm, I'm, I'm a quote-unquote judge. I'm supposed to tell you what the Bible says about your current situations. Oh, I don't want to bother you. Okay, then don't bother me. When you get tired, then you can bother me. When there's nothing left. Or as Jim would say, how's that working for you so far? Come and talk to us. That's what we're here. That's what we have wives for you ladies for. That's what we're here for, to tell you what the Bible says about your circumstances, situation. Isn't that a great story? It only gets better. You know, the only problem is it becomes, we're almost like a pattern in the book of Judges. And Israel ruled for so many years and forgot about God. But it's such a pattern because it looks like our lives. We have success, and then God puts us back in the valley, and then we crawl out of the valley, and we get to the mountaintop, and we say, hallelujah. And then there we are, just looking down at the valley. <sighs> but I miss the valley. Because you'll be there soon enough. Don't worry. I want to go back to the valley. And you wind up falling into some stupid act or some dumb thing. It's easy being the hammer, guys. Hammer's fun. But God gets the best out of you when you're the nail. What do nails do? They hold things together. They're useful. Let's pray. 
Might I also add, you can use anything as a hammer. I mean, my wife has used everything as a hammer. I mean, my goodness, I've seen that woman use vases as a hammer. I've seen her use, she was using a stapler one time as a hammer. It's just a stapler. It was just amazing. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Ladies, you can use anything as a hammer, right? The, bo the back end of a gun you could use as a hammer. No? It's not a good idea, is it? No. He was like, don't do that. <laughs> Father, we thank you that you've given us the chance to gather in your name, to hear your voice, to receive wisdom from your word, God. And we ask you, please, for those that have ears to hear, let them hear what the Spirit will say. God, for, for those who are completely nailed tonight, God, may they know that when they are nailed, that's when you're going to use them the most. God, thank you for allowing us to be the hammer for so much of our lives. God, help us now to be happy and to be blessed knowing that sometimes we are the nail. May we submit under your authority. As your word says, if we will submit under your mighty hand that in due season you will lift us up. God, for that person that's here tonight, not in laughter or in joking, they're really hurting. And they just need your word upon them. God, please, Holy Spirit, not, don't just subdue their heart, but penetrate and saturate their heart. For that person that's here that's really desiring change in their lives, please help them. Help them to stand. Having done all to stand, gird up their loins with the belt of truth. May they have the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, the shoes of peace. May the shield of faith quench every fiery dart that the wicked one throws at them, God, and may they take up the sword of your spirit, which is your word. And by all prayer and supplications, may they not be afraid to call a Samuel and say, pray for me, pray for me. The Philistines are coming after me. For that person, God, Today, may they have received your spirit in a portion they've never imagined. All these things we ask by the power of our King's blood.